Just finding what's a comfortable seated position for you. Taking a deep inhale and exhale. Let your body relax. Let your mind come and be present in this moment. Just take a minute to follow the breath with the mind, staying focused on each inhale and exhale. Feel the sit bones connecting to the floor. The lower belly drawing in towards the spine. And the length of the spine growing up to the ceiling. Practice the Ujjayi Pranayama. So inhaling through both nostrils, exhaling through the left nostril. Just to fill the body with prana and really bring the mind into a concentrated state before we begin. So using that breath with sound, we're going to elongate the exhalation so it's twice as long as the inhalation. Wherever you are, exhale. And then inhale with the Ujjayi sound. Close the right nostril, exhale through the left nostril. Again, inhale through both. Close the right nostril, exhale through the left nostril. Inhale both. Exhale left. Inhale both. Exhale left. Inhale both. Exhale, left. Inhale, both. Exhale, left. As you inhale through both, feel the lifting and the drawing together of the sit bones, the pelvic floor. Exhale, left. Inhale, both. Exhale, 
exhale left. Two more, inhale through both. Using the Ujjayi sound, feeling that drawing together of the sit bones, the tailbone, pubic bone. Exhale, left. Last one, inhale both. Exhale, left. And just returning to that observation of the breath. Observing any differences in your ability or your awareness to breathe. Maybe any differences that you feel in your body or in your mind. As you feel ready, you just slowly begin to open your eyes. Just stretch your legs out. You take a moment, either folding forward or lying back, or maybe just circling the ankles. And then we'll come up to standing. We'll open our asana practice today with an om. Ooh. Exhale, lowering the head. So your namaskar A. Inhale, looking to the thumb. Exhale, folding forward over the leg. Inhale, lift the gaze, look up. Exhale, step or hop the feet back and lower. Inhale, you can either start with cobra or all the way into your upward dog. Exhale, back to your downward facing dog. Breathing here, spreading the fingers, the toes, pressing through the hands, feeling the heels drop down to the floor, the length through the backs of the legs. Three, four, and five. As you inhale, walking or hopping the feet forward, like a little more length at the top there before exhaling back into the legs. And then inhale, come all the way up. And exhale, back to standing, samastitihi. Again, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, back and lower. Inhale, and exhale to the downward dog. Five breaths here. One, I always like to feel that pressure between all four corners of the feet. Two, the big toe mound, the baby toe mound, the inside edge of the heel, the outside edge of the heel. Three, four, and five. Inhale, walk or hop the feet forward. Find that little extra bit of length before exhaling into the leg. 
and inhale, come all the way up. And exhale, back to standing. Inhale, exhale, forward. Inhale, find length. Exhale, back, and lower down. Inhale, opening the chest, upward dog. And exhale to the downward facing dog. Three, one, two, three, four. And five. Inhale, walk or hop the feet forward. Exhale. Inhale, come all the way up. And exhale, Samasthiti. We'll bend the knees. Inhale. Let's hold here, Utkatasana. One, two, three. Four, five. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, find length. Exhale, step or hop the feet back. Lowering, Chattwadi. Inhale, Cobra, upward facing dog. Shut. Exhale to your downward facing dog. Lend your right foot forward, step to inhale. We'll hold the warrior ones as well. Bhira Bhadrasana A. One, two, just giving our body time to feel this first deep lunge. Three, four, and five. Exhale, step back and lower. Inhale, and exhale back. Left foot comes forward, inhale, all the way up. And holding here. One, two, three, four, and five. Exhale, lowering down. Inhale, and exhale back. Five breaths here. One, two, trying to feel the upper outer edges of the arms firming down to the mat. Three, and the head lengthening away from the sit bones. Four, and five, inhale. Walk or hop the feet forward. Exhale, fold into the legs. And then bending the knees, staying nice and low. Inhale, come up, we'll hold again. One, two, three, four, five. And exhale, lower the hands. Deep bend. A come inhale. The way exhale, folding forward. <clears throat> Trini, inhale. Chatwadi, exhale. Lowering down. You can lower to the belly if you need to. Inhale, upward dog or cobra. And exhale, downward facing dog. Lunge your right foot forward. Inhale, come all the way up. We'll breathe here again, five breaths, one. See if we can sink a little deeper into the lunge this time. Two, three, four, five. And then we're gonna come into this other lunge, lifting the back heel. It's like a runner stretch, I guess. Deep breath, softening the shoulders, lifting the chest. Two, 
three, four, five. See if we can stay in this lunge as we bring the hands down and step back, have our feet meet each other in chaturanga position or the high plank. Exhale to lower. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale to your downward facing dog. And lunge forward with your left foot. Inhale, come all the way up. Breathing here. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. And then lift the back heel. Lunging a little deeper. Breathing here. One. Feel this through the front of the leg. Two, three, four, and five. Exhale, bring the hands down, stay in the lunge, and try and step that foot back to meet the other one, finding your high plank position. Exhale down, inhale. And exhale back, downward facing dog. One, deep breathing. Two, three, four, five. Inhale, walk or hop the feet forward. Exhale. And then bend the knees. Inhale all the way up. And exhale back to Samastitihi. Good. One more time. Deep bend. Inhale. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale. Exhale, step or hop the feet back. And lowering down. Inhale, open the chest. And exhale back, downward facing dog. Lend your right foot forward. Inhale, come all the way up. Five breaths here. One, two, three, four, Five, lifting the heel, lunging a little bit deeper here. Again, breathing, one, two, try to soften the shoulders, three, four, five, and then lowering the knee, relax the back foot. You can keep the hands on their front knee or you can lift as we breathe. Two, three, four, five. And then let's bring our left hand down to the inside of the foot. So we're twisting a little here towards our thigh. You can even press this thigh in if you feel like the leg's starting to drop open. Let's just look over the shoulder, getting this twist and moving the stretch more, a little bit into the IT band, the outside of the leg. Deep breaths. Four. Five. And then we're gonna lift the back foot up and reach for the foot and draw it in towards the butt. Ox. Two. Three, four, five. And then lowering down, come back into this lunge. You can place now the right hand on the floor and then reaching back, seeing if you can find your toes or the foot. And now the other way. You might need to bring it from the center out a little. If you feel comfortable, you can 
Come back up towards the knee with the right hand, or you can keep it down on the floor. Or if you have a block, you can place the hand on the block or the book. And stretching a little the other way, more into the quad muscle. You can push back through your right leg a little. So that the knee is lining up over your right ankle. Good, five. Then we'll release that leg, come back into this runner's stretch with the hands down on either side of the foot. Breathing here. Three. Four. And five. And then step back. Exhale down. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale to the downward facing dog. Now the left side, so we'll lunge the left foot forward. Inhale, come all the way up. One, two, three, four, five. And coming into this lunge again, five breaths here. One, two, three, four, five. And then lowering the knee. Again, you can keep the hands here on the knee, or you can lift the arms up, two, three, four, and five. And then bringing the right hand down now, so the inside of the left foot. And you're pressing the left side back into the middle because it's going to have a tendency to roll out to the side. And then you're just Shifting the weight so that you're coming more onto the pinky toe side of that back leg. And getting a nice stretch through the psoas here. Keep pressing your left thigh in. You can try to straighten that back leg a little bit more. And breathe. And this twist. You can kind of shift where you're feeling the sensation a little depending on how much you roll and open to the side. And then we'll reach for the foot and then just gently bring it in. Still twisting, still opening the body here. Three, four, five. And then releasing the knee, we'll come back up and then switching sides, reaching back with the right hand this time, trying to find the toes. And then slowly drawing the foot in. And see if you could try to bring that right shoulder forward so the chest is even and open to the front. And then you can press back through that front leg a little to find the right place where you can feel the stretch moving into the quadricep on the right side, more into the meaty part of the muscle. Three, four, and five. And then lower down, coming back into this runner stretch, pressing through that back leg, the hands are on either side of the foot. Two, three, four, five, and then step back, find that high plank position. Hold here, strong through the legs, chest forward, belly in, bum down. Try and make your body straight and firm. Really lift those knees, engage them by lifting the quadriceps, making the legs stiff, 
and the stomach muscles toned. And then exhale down. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. And we'll breathe here. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. As you inhale, walk or hop the feet forward. Find a little bit of extra length here before exhaling into the legs. And then bend the knees, we'll come up holding Utkatasana. Breathe here, one, two, three, four, five. And then come into even a deeper lunge. Breathing here, one, two, three, four, and five. And let's take our right elbow to the outside edge of our left knee and lift the chest, twisting here, one. If you want, you can reach your right hand down and lift the left hand up, two, three, four, five, and then inhale through the center, and exhale to the other side. Left elbow comes against the outside edge of your right leg, two, and again, there's the alternative hand position if you'd like, three, four, Five, back to the center, and then exhale, straighten the legs and fold. And inhale, bending the knees, come all the way up. And exhale, back to Samastitihi. Good, let's open out wide to the right. Turn the right foot out, and then exhale. We'll come into a triangle position, reaching for the shin, the ankle, or the big toe. Breathe one, two, three, four, five. Inhale to come up and exhale over to that left side. And breathing here, one. And try and keep that left hip open or the right hip bone open. Two, three, four, five. Inhale to come up, moving into this gentle twist, squaring the hips, revolve triangle. If you can, the left hand comes to the outside edge of the right foot, twisting here. One, two, three, four, five. Inhale all the way up and exhale over to the other side. Bringing that right hand down, try to square the hips and then opening the shoulders. One, two, three, Four, five. Inhale all the way up. We're just going to take the feet a little wider this time. So just opening them out and then turn that right knee coming into warrior two. Bending deep in that right knee. And then we're going to shift. Let's bring the hand to the front of the right foot. You're really going to press the arm into the right knee and try and twist and open the rib cage as you look up towards your thumb. It's a variation of Parsva Konasana. Really opening, press through that right heel, 
and try and feel a slight clockwise pressure through the heel. Good, and then see if you can drop your left arm down. You can bring the hand to the back of your hip, or you can reach the right arm under and find this bind. Three, four, five. Inhale to come up. Good, left side, warrior two. Deep bend here into that left knee, strong straight right leg. And then as you exhale, bringing the left hand to the front of the foot and looking up to your right fingertips. And while you're here, pressing through that left heel, there's a slight counterclockwise pressure through the heel. You can really feel the leg turning out in the hip. And then you can start to take the arm back Dropping the hand down and just come to the hip area, helping you drop your sit bone a little more, or you can reach back and find the fingers and pull and open the chest even more. Three, four, and five. Inhale all the way up, move into the revolved side angle, so deep lunge here into your right knee. And work that left arm across. Again, a couple of options for you. You can press the hands into a prayer position. You can try to bind the fingers and open. You can do more of a classical position, reaching the hand down stretching through the fingertips. Three, four, and five. Inhale all the way up, pivot around on the feet, and then exhale over to the other side. Again, you can press the hand, just breathing here, strong back leg. You can try and tuck the fingers under and find the hands and the bind, pulling open the chest, or a slightly more classical option, the palm to the floor, and reaching out, looking up to the fingertips. Three, four, and five. Good. Inhale, come all the way up, and exhale, samasthiti. And open out wide to the right. And exhale, folding forward, bringing the hands to the floor. Inhale, lift the gaze, look up, and then exhale. Dropping the top of the head to the floor, we'll breathe here. One, two, Three, four, and five. Inhale, look up, exhale. Inhale, come all the way up, exhaling here. We'll move right to C. Inhale, reaching the hands out, interlacing the fingers. Again, inhale, opening the chest, pulling the shoulder blades together, and exhaling to fold forward. One, two, three, four, five. Inhale, come all the way up. And then exhale, come back to the top of the mat. So let's do to he. Good. We're going to take this position where we lift our right leg up. So you can just lift your knee 
Then we're going to open. Ooh, I have to find my balance today. Open the leg like you're going to serve your foot up for dinner. So you want the knee to open up to the side. You're externally rotating the hip. And the hands will come underneath the heel and underneath the calf. And then you're going to lift with your hands as if you wanted to eat off your foot. And while you're lifting, you're letting the leg release and just relax. So a little bit of lift through the heel. And then your hands are trying to draw the foot towards the belly. But as they do this, the foot is trying to escape you and get away. So you're creating a little bit of traction here with the leg and the hip, just slowly opening. So the hands are drawing the foot in. The foot is trying to escape and get away. At the same time, it's lifting up and the weight of the leg is dropping down, feeling heavy. So four things are happening here. And hopefully you feel the leg opening in the hip a little deeper. Good. And then we'll just bring it into this figure four position, dropping the ankle to the knee. And then bending like we did for Utkatasana, but this time we can bring our chest down towards the leg. We'll just bring the hands to the floor and see if you can bend a little deeper. Three, keep letting this knee relax down. Four, and five. And then inhale, come up. Ooh, exhale, lower down. We'll try on the left side, lift the left knee up into the chest. And then lifting the heel, let the knee open. So you're making like a 90 degree angle here. So the heel is out and away from you. And then bring the right hand under the left heel and the left hand under the ankle or the calf. And then again, the leg is heavy and you're letting it be heavy. Feel the weight of the leg. But you're also trying to lift the heel up towards your head. And at the same time, you're trying to pull the heel in but the heel is trying to get away from you. It's trying to win and escape, but you're not letting it. So you're drawing the foot in and it's trying to push away. And you're lifting the heel up, but then the leg is also heavy, dropping down. Pulling in, but the leg is pushing away. You're lifting up, but it's heavy, it's dropping down. Just feel this, all these different directions, allowing the leg to release. Each time it gets heavy, you feel it release a little bit more. And then bringing the heel or the ankle on top of the leg for this figure four position, bending the right knee, bringing the hands down. We'll breathe here, try and bend even more. You'll feel it in the hip, I suspect. Three, four, five. Good, and the leg is staying bent as you come up and then straightening once you're at the top. Exhale, heels and toes together. Let's take a vinyasa, inhale, exhale, fold forward. Woo. Inhale, head up and exhale, step or hop the feet back. And lower down. Inhale, open the chest up with them. And exhale, back to your downward facing dog. Lifting the sit bones. We'll just breathe here, five breaths. Three, four, and five. Inhale, walk or hop the feet through. And extend the legs out in front. Let's just sit up nice and tall, lifting the chest. We'll just take a forward bend so you can reach for your toes or the sides of the feet or pull open the tops of the feet or reach for your wrist around the ends of the feet. Wherever you place your hands, find length with an inhale and then exhale, relaxing forward. One, 
two, three, four, and five. Inhale, head up. And exhale here. Let's lift our right leg up. We're just going to lift that knee and bring the heel towards the sit bone. Then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to bring our left hand under the right heel and our right hand under the calf or the ankle and let the knee just open up. So again, it's making this wide angle in front of you. And then sitting up nice and tall, try not to let yourself do this, this rounding action. Try to keep the weight forward on the sit bones so that the spine is straight. It's not rounded and collapsing. You really want to push your weight forward to the front edges of the bony part of your butt that's connected to the floor. And then as you lift the heel, you're allowing the knee to drop open. And you're going to try to pull the foot in towards you as if you're bringing it into a half lotus. But the foot is resisting this action and trying to get away from you. And so as you sit and allow that opening to happen, all four directions of pressure are working to open the leg and the hip. So you're trying to draw the foot in, you're sitting up tall, the foot's trying to escape. You're trying to lift the foot up, but then the leg is heavy. You're just gently opening. You might even reach around, you can even pull the toes back. Sometimes that's helpful, the leg is very heavy. So you're trying to pull back and the leg's trying to get away from you. you try and sit up nice and tall. Good. And then let's place the ankle again down on the thigh. So making this figure four position. And we're going to lift the foot up. And again, when we do this figure four position, try not to let this happen, this sinking back. So as you drop the foot, making the figure four position, keep the back straight. If you have a wall, you can sit with your sit bones right up against the wall. And then you're gonna sit up nice and tall and you're pushing your weight forward into the front edges of the sit bones and keeping your right ankle flexed. And rather than thinking about bringing the leg back towards your chest and making a ball, I want you to think of lifting so that the chest is moving towards the thigh. So you're really kind of reaching forward here with the rib cage and moving the weight of the leg or the weight of your body onto the sit bones. And really lift up out of the sit bones, lift tall through the spine, soft shoulders. Good. And then we'll just release, extend that leg out. And start with the left leg. Bring the left heel up. So you can start by bringing the knee up and then opening the knee out to the side. The left heel is in the right palm. The left hand is underneath and you're sitting up tall. So remember the tendency is to sink. I want you to resist that. Lift the chest, open the heart, shoulder blades pulling down the back. Your weight is coming forward into the fronts of the sit bones. And then as you lift the heel, the leg is heavy. It's trying to drop down. So these two tensions of trying to lift up, but the leg saying, I don't want to lift up. I'm heavy. I want to go down. And then the hands are pulling in towards the belly, but the foot is trying to escape out into the green pastures on the other side of your yoga space. So sitting up tall, you too can go to those green pastures when you're finished here. Lifting the heel up, letting the leg be heavy, opening the hip, let the knee drop down as the heel comes up. And then again, if you want, you can pull the toes back. If you can reach under and grab the toes, you're pulling your foot in, but the foot is trying to escape and get away. 
and you keep lifting up, but it's heavy, the knee wants to drop down. You're pulling the foot in, but it's trying to get away. So just feeling the leg opening in that hip area. So it's a very deep opening that starts to happen. And you shouldn't feel any pressure in the knee at all. Okay, you're trying to really work the leg against the hip. And then coming into this figure four position. Now, remember, as you start to lift this knee, you have to maybe put your hands back here so that your spine stays tall. And then just lift onto the heel and then put the sole of the foot down. Don't bring it in so far right away. You really wanna push the chest forward so that you feel like you can sit on the front edges of the sit bone and not round and collapse. This does nothing for your hips. So really sit up tall. You can reach through the leg. And if you keep bringing that foot forward, I want you to sit up even taller. So every time the foot comes a little closer to you, you have to hug the thigh in and pull the chest up. Shoulders drop down. Breastbone lifts up. The crown of the head lifts up. You keep getting taller as you're opening the leg and the hip. And the left ankle is flexing. Breathing here, just allowing the leg to release. Soft shoulders, nice deep full breaths. Good. And then exhale, release down. Now we're going to take our left shin and line it up with the top of the mat. Again, it's that same angle we've been working on actually. If you look, it's this same figure four angle. You're just removing your right leg. And we're going to then place the right leg on top. So now we have two figure four positions and no legs. But the right ankle is lined up over top of the left knee and the right knee is directly over top of the left ankle. And now we're going to start to walk the hands forward in this ankle to knee posture, sometimes called maybe a log cabin posture or a swastika posture or a um, there was another name for it. Someone out there knows, I'm sure. Uh, very nice, interesting position. Don't cheat yourself. If the hips are tight, try not to sickle this ankle to get the knee lower. Try and really keep both ankles flexed and then work with what you got, keeping the ankle over the knee. Over time, you'll feel the release happen in the hips. So let's walk over towards the left, towards the top foot. And we'll just twist here. You can bring the back of the right arm against the sole of that left foot if it works for you. And again, you're reaching and trying to relax, relax the head. And just get that different sensation, that different stretch through the side body. And I think you'll probably feel something in that right, hip area, the right glute area maybe, or along the right side. And then we'll walk the hands around, try and lengthen through the front as you pass, and come over to the other side. And again, this side is a little bit harder to find any traction, but try and just reach out towards the side as much as you can. Stretching here, relaxing the head if you can. Relax the neck and the shoulders. And then inhale back to the front. Again, reaching one last time forward through the front. You can relax your head down. That's great. Maybe it can rest in your hands. 
and then inhale to come up and then we'll just cross the legs here let's take a vinyasa so stepping or hopping the feet back just to cycle the circulation through the hips and the legs and the knees and the ankles exhale down inhale you can take a little longer in your upper dog if you want and then exhale back and then walk or hop your feet forward again stretching the legs out and now you have to remember which leg you did first so i had my left leg down first so now we'll bring the right leg down and place the left ankle on top of the right knee the left knee over top of the right ankle so you're trying to line your shins up one on top of the other and you're keeping this 90 degree practically ankle angle of the legs and then walking forward with the hands just reaching out over the legs here you can relax your head down keep both ankles flexed energy through the ankles pressing back that's going to help stabilize your knee so whenever you put tension through the ankles here it helps to just support these muscles get stronger and more tight and it stabilizes the knee area so we'll walk over to the top foot side first so in this case it's the right side again we're stretching through that left hip area breathing try to relax the tension drawing the belly in getting a nice deep twist here And then walk through, stretch forward as you pass through the middle and over to the other side. And again, you have to kind of maybe pull the belly in, shift the weight, try and keep the weight on both sit bones. Deep breaths. Once you reach that spot where you're feeling nice sensation, And then inhale back to the front. Walk the hands forward again. Take a couple of breaths here. And then come up. And again, we'll just cross the legs and take a vinyasa, stepping or hopping the feet back exhale down inhale you can take a little more time into your upward dog and exhale back to your downward facing dog and then inhale walk or hop your feet through we're gonna lie down today so stretching the legs out in front line straight back let's hug our right knee into our chest just pull the knee in nice and tight and stretch through the front of that left leg so keeping the left leg strong and active and then we're going to cross this right knee over to the left side of the body and stretch the right palm to the floor and look out over the right shoulder just a little gentle twist here big deep full breaths And after five breaths, we'll come back to the middle. And we're gonna 
cross the ankle over the left thigh again. So coming into this figure four position, feel the belly connect to the floor. And then you're just gonna start to lift the thigh towards you. And you can reach through the hole you've made in your legs or reach around your legs as you feel. And when you draw that thigh in, this time you're trying to reach your sit bones and your tailbone, your sacrum. You wanna keep the sacrum connected to the floor. Try and relax any tension through the shoulders. Feel the belly pull in, flattening the spine to the floor as much as possible. And then as you're pulling that left thigh towards the chest, you're keeping your right ankle flexed, the right knee is moving away from your rib cage, and you're really lengthening the tailbone away from the crown of the head. So you should feel again, even maybe a slightly deeper stretch than you were able to find standing or sitting. And by deeper, I mean more sensation through the right hip. Good, and then just release the leg a little, extend that right leg down straight and pull the left knee into the rib cage. So you're drawing the thigh into the chest, really putting energy through the right leg, pointing it straight down to the floor. And then we're gonna twist, dropping the left knee over to the right side, looking out over that left shoulder, the left palm can come to the floor. And then after five breaths, coming back, and we drop the knee down in this figure four position, pulling the right foot flat to the floor. And before you start to lift the thigh, feel where your pelvis is, Try and lengthen the tailbone, the sacrum away from the head. Keep your spine straight and connected to the earth. As you start to bring the thigh up, you're going to keep stretching the sacrum, the tailbone, moving it away from your head. So again, deep breaths. The right, or sorry, the left ankle stays flexed. You really want that pressure through that left ankle. Try to relax the shoulders, pull the belly in. Try not to let the chest or the stomach lift up off the floor. That's your body trying to avoid the tighter areas by moving into a more flexible area. So keep the spine connected to the floor. And then really move the sacrum, the tailbone away from the crown of the head. Keep the sacrum rooted and grounded and heavy to the floor. And then you're pulling the thigh closer to the chest, little by little. The left knee is moving away from the chest. And then release the legs down. We'll just do one more, lifting the right leg straight up. Just breathe here. With each exhale, try to release a little bit more. And let the weight of the arms, wherever they are, if they're at the calf or the knee or the ankle or the heel, just let them slowly stretch the leg. Really, it's just creating a little excess gravity or pressure. So not really pulling in an aggressive way, but just letting the arms be heavy, letting the weight of the arms and the breath, the depth of the breath, be what's opening through the back of that leg. Good. 
And then exhale, lower the right leg. Inhale, lift the left leg up. And again, you can reach wherever feels comfortable for you. You can always start lower down and gradually move the hands up. Again, letting the weight of the arms just get heavier and heavier. And the shoulders release. The spine stays long. Not pulling in an aggressive way. And just letting the body relax here. More relaxation with the legs, the muscles of the legs. Good. And then release, we'll lift both legs straight up and then bend the knees, try and pull the heels down towards the floor. And at the same time, you're trying to again, lengthen the tailbone and the sacrum away from the crown of the head. You can kind of pull the heels towards you and the knees are going to open away from you. So you're trying to come into a very deep squatting position on the floor or on the ceiling. Like happy baby, I guess, or dead bug, but really working the heels towards you, the knees away from you, the sacrum away from the crown of the head. Again, creating that traction or that tension to help open the legs and the hips Good. and then just hug the knees into the chest and you can hug the head into the legs making a tight little bowl here and then exhale just allow the shoulder blades to come underneath you the legs to release in the hips and the palms to open to the ceiling just let your body get heavy and pay attention here as you lie in this final resting pose, sometimes called corpse posture. Just observe the movement of the energy or the prana through the body. Maybe you can feel your toes tingling. Maybe you can feel sort of a cool or a running water sensation through the thighs or the hip area, maybe in the knees. Observe if there's any pinching sensation anywhere or tight sensation or dense sensation. Maybe there's a heat or a warm feeling. Just watch with your eyes closed. Maybe there's some tingling at the top of the head. Maybe a pulsing. And check out your jaw. Is it soft? Is it relaxed? So observe this prana as it moves, it shifts, it pools in certain areas. And then it moves again and pools in a different area. It circulates through the whole body. Like the circulation moving, the energy also moves. It moves through you, around you can move in and out and in and out, sewing you back together. Just allow this prana, this life force to do what it's in you to do. It knows how to heal you. It wants to bring everything into balance, into a homeostasis, into a peaceful harmony, a place 
where all things exist together. In a state of clarity and union and different parts that do different things but work together to make a greater whole. This is our body. This is how things work. Everything does something different and yet all parts work together. Recognizing that as our body is, so the world is, our planet, and the whole universe, expanding, contracting, healing, breaking down. Everything works together. When we have union, yoga, or the state of balance and harmony. Things work together joyfully. They work together without conflict. They work towards the greater good. And it's the same in our body. Inhaling peace. And exhale, release. Inhaling peace. And exhale, release. Deep peace. And full release. Peace and release. You can stay here enjoying your rest. You can slowly start to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Maybe hug the knees into the chest. Maybe twist to one side or the other side. However feels comfortable and natural for you. Whenever you're ready, please don't rush. Take your time. I'll leave you here, enjoying the rest and the fullness, and the depth of the relaxation, the purna. Just take time to sink into that fullness and let it fill you, be immersed in that fullness. And then take that fullness with you, whatever you do next in those greener pastures outside the practice. Have a great, wonderful day. Namaste.